My subject is risk, and I'm sure it's all of your favorite subject. But uh, my association with risk goes back 40 years. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've had five different careers in different fields, all within a 15-mile radius of Albany. I'd like to share a little bit of my journey with you before I talk about risk. My dad was an entrepreneur, and as a teenager, I worked with him, but I observed as he lost his business to an unscrupulous partner and bad health. I took his advice and didn't want to follow in his footsteps, so I decided to enroll at UAlbany in the uh, pre-med program. I flunked freshman biology and had to pivot. <laughs> I, I graduated with a degree in English and enrolled in Albany Law School. It was my uh, consolation prize. I flunked out of Albany Law School and had to pivot again. <laughs> I followed my passion for photography and got a job as a clerk in a camera store for a company that wanted to expand, and I spent nine years managing the expansion of a chain of camera stores for somebody else. When I realized that there was no equity position in that company for me, I decided I might have to pivot again. And through serendipity and a family friend uh, who turned out to be uh, my first angel investor, I decided to open up a imported cheese shop in downtown Albany. I wasn't going to quit my day job, but in my youthful arrogance, I managed to get myself fired. So then I had to make a decision, and I did, so I jumped with both feet into cheese. It's a logical next step, is it not? We found out very soon that we had the wrong location in downtown Albany and uh, totally ran out of money, but were saved by another angel investor uh, when my first one bailed and my father-in-law stepped in to save me. Now, you don't want to be in that position. <laughs> but Ed Squire, the owner of Stuyvesant Plaza, really needed a boutique store, and we opened a store there in 1981, built it up over the years, and by 1988, through three mortgages and all kinds of problems, we started to experience some success. That success attracted another angel investor named Dan Cowan, and in 1988, we opened a business called Cowan and Lobel, which was a 12,000 square foot, 60 employee gourmet food emporium. And we were rocking and rolling, and I had three years of uh, 15 minutes of fame. And despite the fact that sales reached about $3 million by 1991, the angel investor turned into the devil, our partnership failed, and I found myself booted out of my own business. I was a little depressed, and out of uh, an emotional need to own another business, I found a friend, and we found a business through a business broker and bought a screen printing and embroidery company. You get the logical extension of my <laughs> career path here, uh, up in Saratoga. Uh, it, it was a, an established business, but was troubled. However, I was uh, young and somewhat arrogant. I figured if I could build these other businesses and survive all kinds of challenges, why not this business? And it appealed to my uh, creative side. Well, we bought the business without any due diligence. I didn't even know the term due diligence. And we made an emotional decision, not a good idea. I didn't know the idea of failure. I figured I just threw everything I had at it, including all of our family's money. And within two years of hemorrhaging money, uh, I was forced into personal bankruptcy. Uh, we were literally padlocked out of a factory of what could have been an, a successful business if I knew what I was doing, and I take all the blame for not knowing. Uh, I cornered the president of the State University of New York at Albany, my alma mater, Pat Swigert, cornered him at a fundraising cocktail party and literally convinced him to hire me as the first ever director of marketing at the University at Albany. It was uh, not a budgeted line position, but I jumped into that position with both feet and actually managed to raise some money for the university and hope to keep my job. Uh, luckily, we converted that job into a line position, and I became the assistant vice president for alumni affairs of the University at Albany, and I had uh, 100,000 alumni to work with, and a secretary in a building, and it was great fun. 
I became an adjunct professor in the School of Business, teaching marketing management, and I was having a great time. But I realized I was hitting the glass ceiling. I only had a bachelor's degree, and I was trying to figure out what to do next. Totally out of serendipity and a handshake, I decided to join Anchor Agency to see if I could make a living selling insurance. Next logical step. So I actually decided to go after emerging technology companies, and it worked. And uh, so here's what I got to say about risk. The important thing to do with risk is first identify it and measure it. You can all do that. Make it part of your business planning conversation. Then decide what to do with it. You either absorb it or try to avoid it. And finally, if you can't absorb it or avoid it, transfer it by contract or by insurance. Thank you.